welcome back to the Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and uh, it's time for a relaxing, sketchy Sunday. I don't do these very often but I just feel it is appropriate today. It is quite early in the morning as well so this is like my quietest time and normally on a Sunday it's very quiet for the first like hour and then everything will happen so I'm just taking this opportunity. So I'm filming this a week before. I do like to film these on a Sunday because it makes me feel the way I want you guys to feel. So I've got an idea for a drawing and I just want to go through the sketching stage today. I won't be doing the finished drawing but when I do do it I will post it on Instagram. This is my Instagram handle if you're not aware of it and you want to go and see what's happening. Uh, I, so far I've been quite true to my word with things like that. So this idea has come about and it's actually been from helping one of our viewers with a, a drawing that she is working on and the picture was of a rowboat. Now the idea I had in my head, I'm sure I have seen it as a like um like a photograph but like blown up, you know, like an artwork that you would hang on your wall. I am not copying from a direct source but I'm sure I have seen this type of subject matter in a photograph at some point. So I'm doing this out of my head but the composition I think has been done a million times over in photographic form or digital form and it's really this is more of an exercise for me rather than wanting to create a finished picture. I've talked about being at the stage where I can draw some things from you know from memory. I've talked about this memory bank of things in my drawing tips for beginners videos uh, and there's some things that I'm not familiar with drawing so that's really the idea today is to build up those things in my memory bank of less familiar items to me because most of you know I like to draw animals and I also like to draw nature. So we're, we're kind of like veering away from that a little bit today. I just uh, I just want to kind of go through the motions because a lot of you are quite interested in my sketching process. So we'll get zoomed in a little bit. I've been having trouble with this autofocus. It's been kind of funky this last little while. So Right, so this idea, uh, it incorporates a number of things. The first thing is we're going to talk about perspective. So the picture that our viewer was working on was of a wooden rowboat sitting on, um, sitting on a, it looked like a lake. And what I wanted to do was do a perspective drawing. It's just going to be one point perspective, which is the simplest perspective technique that you can use and what I want it to be is if you're sitting in in a rowboat looking out into the water you know if you get that nice relaxed calm water so you you know th this is us like we, we, we would be back here sitting somewhere facing this way so I want to be able to draw the end of the rowboat because obviously we would be able to see that and then have some sort of landscape in the background so in order to achieve that, one of the things we need to do is work out the perspective points, which shouldn't be too difficult. So when we're working with one point perspective, and again, I'm going to cover this in our drawing tips for beginners. Basically, if you've got your sheet of paper and the first thing you want to do is find your vanishing point. So that is the that is the point where everything's going to feed towards or the direction of the eye line. Sometimes it's called as well. So if we're sitting here in our little rowboat, then obviously the vanishing point's going to be somewhere way, way in the distance. And it's up to you, depending on the composition of the picture, will depend on where you want that line. But I want mine roughly in the middle because I do want to have some of this sort of landscape that I can draw in in the background. So if I plonk it even roughly in the middle of the paper, because that's going to give me a nice, even line for drawing in my boat and I'll show you what I mean if I move it in a moment. So when you've got your vanishing point you just want to take a ruler and any lines that you want coming off of that, so in this case the lines for our boat, you're just going to use your ruler and draw them off the side of the paper. So I, w I want the boat to be in the middle, um, you know, because we're going to be sitting in the middle of the boat. So the easiest way to do that is just to line it up with the, what would be the corner of the paper and just put a really light line into your vanishing point. So that's like a guideline for us. Now we also need to put the horizon in as well. Um, you can do this first. If you're doing something more complicated, you probably put your horizon line in first. So as I say, I've, I've put my vanishing point in the middle because I want quite a bit of room so that I can add in some detail for what will be the, you know, the, the scenery kind of thing. So there we go. That's a really, really simple, really straightforward. Now just to show you what I was talking about, I'll just do another dummy thumbnail over here. If I move my vanishing point either to the left or the right, so say I was going to put it way over here, 
then when we do our perspective lines, I'll just put my horizon in again, then what that does is it's going to skew the angle of your boat. So that would, if you've got it off to the right, then it would look as if you were sort of sitting slightly sideways in your boat. By the same token, if you move your vanishing point up high, then this happens. So it would look as if you're kind of like looking down into your boat. So there's quite a lot to that. I don't want to go into too much detail, but I just wanted you to understand why I've done what I've done here. What I do need to do is practice rowboat structures because I have no idea how they were put together. So all I've done is go on to Google and look up like a bajillion different rowboats and how they've actually been constructed and put together. So again, I'm not using one particular reference image. That's what using reference properly is all about, is to get an idea of what you should be doing so that it looks realistic and it looks right, but you're not directly copying from someone's photograph because, well, number one, you don't want to, you want it to be your own. But secondly, there can be a lot of copyright issues attached to that. So just looking at these different sort of boat structures, two things strike me about these small sort of rowboat types. And that is that when you have this front part, so I'm just going to draw a couple of these here, but most of them do come to a point. Now, obviously, perspective is going to, going to skew that, but we'll worry about that after. I'm just looking at structure here. But most of them either have uh, some sort of strut that seems to come and it goes into the, the curvature of the boat. So it goes down and in like that if you were looking side on. And others have like two sort of pieces that join here and then there's a sort of um, like not a bench but there's a little sort of uh, platform here and I'm assuming that's to hold the front of the boat together and then after that you've got your planks that come down in here and then you're you're into sort of bench territory. <laughs> So that's really the part of the boat we're going to be looking at is, you know, obviously, obviously the viewpoint of this drawing is going to be, you know, sitting on this, on this bench. So it's really sort of this part here that we're going to be interested in. So in looking at the perspective, we need to make sure that we get it at the right angle so that it doesn't look as if we're looking down into the boat. Now, if I was to go with this drawing here, that was what, that is what it would look like. So when we're thinking about our horizon here, we're going to have a much wider shape. So we want a really wide angle. So when we've got our vanishing point, when we draw in these lines with our ruler, we want these to be really, really wide. So like here, and we want that to take up quite a lot of the picture. And then we've got our horizon. So I might even pop the horizon slightly further up. So the vanishing point would still be there. And we can just bring that down, but the, the boat, the front of the boat is going to stop short of that because we want to be able to see that horizon line. So when you're drawing in your perspective lines, it just follows the same rule. So really what we want to do is the boat's going to follow that line to maybe say there. And then we're going to bring that out and widen that out. And then you can start to put in you know, whatever it is you can see. And obviously the further back you get, the wider these parts are going to be, because it's going like this. So I don't know whether I want to have some sort of post there. And then we can show the interior of the boat by these curved bottom planks, which are going to go under the bench. And obviously that helps with the perspective as well, because the closer we get towards ourselves, the wider this becomes, and that gives that nice angle and that sort of viewpoint that we're looking for. So I'm quite happy with that. In terms of texture, this is one of the other things I wanted to, to kind of have a look at as well. If you're looking at planks of wood, I've just seen a picture here and the front of the boat's got this lovely sort of curved polished, <laughs> polished point on it like this. It looks really nice. Anyway, I don't know whether I'm going to incorporate that in or not. Uh, but yeah, the one thing we want to look at is texture and I want it to be kind of like an old rowboat. So... If I've got just one plank here, I want to sort of think about the shading and the texture as well. Now, obviously, depending on where that plank is in the boat will depend on how dark my shading is. But let's just say this was like a bottom part that was in shadow. So I want to keep the shading quite sort of patchy because that helps with the, the texture. So darker at the bottom and then less shading up towards the top. You know, if this was the part that was in shadow. 
I forgot to mention as well, I'm just using a really cheap HB mechanical pencil here. I'm not using any fancy pencils. I tend not to when I'm doing things like this. I save my uh, my, my sort of better quality pencils for, um, for uh, more detailed and more sort of finished drawings. I'm just using my kneaded eraser to take away that top line a little bit, keep it nice and nice and pale. And then after that, we want to think about wood. Now, wood grain's a texture that most people are reasonably familiar with. Uh, I have a lot, I'm surrounded by wood. Uh, most things in my house are wooden apart from the bricks and the walls. <laughs> so it's uh, not anything new to me. And basically all you want to do is you want to add in some texture and with wood, it's going to go with the grain of the wood. And, you know, if you cut a bit of wood, then you can usually see which direction the grain's running in. And obviously, if you cut a tree trunk, you see the rings. So we have to think about that. So we don't want any lines going up and down the way, unless there's like a crack or something. We want the bulk of the texture to move across the plank. Now, obviously, when we're thinking about our actual boat drawing, these ones are going to go in this direction. And the ones in here are going to be on a curve and then your bench is going to be straight across. So that's going to be a really good way to help us differentiate between the different planks that actually make up the rowboat. So if I just come down here, and really this is uh, this is just something that comes with practice. And even though the shading is going from light to dark here, there will still be darker parts here where there's knots in the wood or there's a particularly deep crack. That's going to look a lot darker. So it's really, you want to try and keep it as random as possible. Uh, you know, you don't want to concentrate too much on where you're putting things because you end up something looks uniform and you've kind of done it by accident. But if you just vary your pressure when you're putting in, you know, this sort of texture and detail and maybe stick in a knot, which is just basically like a, a sort of egg shape and then you can have a dark middle and just add some lines, you know, something like that. And then build up some lines round about it as well. And maybe have one up here too. And this one might not be quite so so dark so this is the kind of thing you're looking at so there you go that's like really really simple like you don't get much more simple than that but when you put that together in a picture that is going to look like a wood effect and this is this is what I keep saying you know like uh, things when you're drawing they don't have to be complicated to make them look like what you're trying to achieve because people's brains will pick up the pointers that you've laid down and they will make up the picture themselves because human beings are clever you know what I mean we've got good brains so something as simple as that and that's taken me a couple of minutes obviously when you're incorporating it into a larger drawing then um, it's going to take you a bit longer but it does doesn't have to be really complicated and detailed to make a good picture. So the other thing I need to think about as well is the, the actual landscape, you know, the view that we're looking at from our little rowboat. So I'll just pop this down in here. I'm not going to go over the page just yet. So I want there to be a bit of interest, but I want to keep this idea of it being quite a sort of calm and serene view that we're looking at. So again, if I, if I just stick my boat in, to like there maybe so this is just very rough so that, that's going to be my boat in here and this is what we've got to work with maybe the horizon is going to be about there I would like to see a little bit of water above the front of the boat things we can think about first of all the sky section what kind of sky are we going for and I was thinking about maybe putting in uh because I quite like sunsets or sunrises let's make it a sunrise and the nice thing about doing something like that and the reason that people use it a lot in art is it can give you some really nice lighting effects. So even if we decided that the sun was rising, we could have, maybe there's a little bit of land here. Now, because this is far off in the distance, anything that we do with the landscape isn't going to be really detailed and it's going to be quite pale. Now, by making it pale, we're pushing that further away from the viewpoint. So the, the lighter and sort of hazier you make things, the, the further away it seems in the, in the picture. So we could just stick a little landmass in there and maybe it pokes out into the water a little bit. I don't know. Maybe the sun's coming up from behind the behind this landmass, you know, maybe the sun's here. And if it's nice and calm, I don't want there to be a lot of clouds, but we'll maybe have just one or two little wispy, wispy bits. Uh, let's see, and maybe there's a little island here and it's a bit closer. Maybe it's just a little rock that's poking out the water and there's a lonely tree that's growing off of it. So we can pop that in, maybe like this. 
So you've got a little bit of interest and the eye is going to be drawn to the front of the boat just because that's slap bang in the middle of the picture and there's going to be the most detail in this part of the picture. So we're going to look at the boat initially and then your eye is going to be drawn up towards this, this landscape. Now with the water being calm as well, I don't want a lot of detail in the water and there's the reflections are going to be quite uh, crisp because... Well, you know what it's like if you look at your reflection in the water and then you poke your finger in it, it all ripples, doesn't it? And it starts to distort. So there's not going to be a huge amount of that. So we'll maybe have a, a few lines round our little round our little island here. Let's just uh, fill this rock in so that we know what we're dealing with. And then the same here. So just a few lines here and there would be good. Now, the other thing that I like to do, see when I'm at this sketching stage, is if I'm thinking about light sources and it's something that I want to incorporate into my drawing I use these sort of thumbnail sketches to help me plan that out and all I do is take a coloured pencil and it doesn't matter what colour it is because obviously you use proper colours when you do your drawing and what I do is I colour in the light source itself so in this case it's going to be this rising sun and we want to think about where that light is going to bounce off so the areas where you're going to use that to help make the picture more interesting so obviously it's going to catch the bottom of these clouds a little bit so there might be a little bit here and maybe halfway along this wispy cloud here and it's going to catch the top of our landmass here as well so anything, this landmass is obviously going to block off the sun from hitting anything down this side. So again, what I would do is I would draw like a, just a, a sort of indicator line as to where the light would stop, you know, where it's being cut off by the landmass. So there is going to be a reflection on the water, but it's going to stop here because this bit of ground's sticking out. So we would have a little bit here. Now thinking about over here, because the sun's here, it's going to be this left hand side where the, the reflection is. So there might be a little bit on this rock here and then the left hand side of the tree as well. And then we think about our boat. So there might be a little bit here. And because we're quite far back, we're going to get some sort of reflection on the top sections of the boat. So if I just go back again, I've not really decided how I'm going to, you know, what the inside of this boat's going to look like. But if I just draw in roughly what we've talked about already, um, and maybe our maybe our bench is going to be maybe we've got a bench in front of us. There's some, maybe something about there. Uh, but this part of the boat is going to be tucked underneath, so it's not really going to get an awful lot of this reflection. But the sun might hit this bench part. You know, there might be a little bit of of light there. So that's something that I find really helpful because it takes the guesswork out of it. When you're actually working on a finished piece, you're not having to work hard with that because you already know where stuff like this is going. And I find that that makes the process a lot quicker when you do get to, to that sort of detail stage and you're putting colour in a finished a finished piece. And this is just a really good way. And this is why thumbnailing is so, so, so important. Okay, so lastly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this boat in a bit more detail and decide on the design of this this part, you know, this interior part of the boat. So I'm just going to draw it out really roughly here again and I'll start working on a bit more detail and decide what we want. Now, for some reason, I don't know why, <laughs> I'm going to put in these side parts first. Now, maybe, just maybe, oh, okay, so my battery skipped out there, dagnamit. The, these side parts here, I have made slightly more curved and they're also going to be thicker the closer they are to the viewer and that helps to give that, that sort of nice perspective and the fact that you're sitting in the boat. So I wanted to have this sort of fancy piece here as well. I don't know why, but I just wanted to put that in. I don't think dinky little rowboats have got stuff like that, but mine does. And then I really like the idea of this little shelf or platform. Um, I'm sure there is a technical name for it. And that's going to make the area underneath there really, really dark because it's sticking out. So again, if I just sort of indicate that there might be some shadow under there, that helps. And I was just, uh, I was rambling away to myself and realising I wasn't recording. <laughs> but I found a couple of images of boats where the, the planks run across the way rather than up and down the way. And uh, I actually really like that idea because it helps to show the curvature of the boat. So there's these sort of supporting struts and that's what I was just doing there when I realised that I wasn't filming. So when we're looking at these, the, the they're going to be more pronounced, like the curve's going to be more pronounced the closer they are to the viewer. And we're going to see two planes of these. We're going to be able to see the top part 
which I'm just drawing in here. And again, if the if you've got some that are closer to the viewer, they're going to be thicker. So you can see the sort of width that I've done this one, but we're going to be able to see the top part because we're sitting above the height of where it is, but we're also going to be able to see the part that's actually facing us. And with the light source coming from this sun that we were talking about, this is going to be in shadow. This, this plane that's actually facing the viewer is going to be in shadow because obviously it's the opposite side to where the light's coming from. So there seems to be, in these ones that I've got the planks that run across the way, there seems to be at least one plank in this, uh, in this middle part here, and it's obviously just to hold it together. So again, thinking about our perspective lines, if they come from the vanishing point, all of your lines, all of your lines you want to draw out from your vanishing point. So if we were to do that, our vanishing point's obviously somewhere up here. We want this to be narrower at this front end because it's further away. And then the closer, again, we get to the viewer, the wider we want it to be. So as long as we're keeping it kind of equidistant from the sides of the boat, that's going to look okay as well. And then we can just start adding in these planks here. Now, again, when we're thinking about that, if I just show you up here, I'm going to run out of space here. Furthest away point and this closest edge, the closer they are to the viewer, the wider apart those lines are going to be. And again, this is what perspective is all about, and it's something that you learned. That one wasn't very good. But that helps to give that idea that we're heading in that direction. But maybe I'll put this one here, and then we won't see another one till maybe all the way back here. Now, that's not exactly lined up with my, my fancy sort of piece here, so that's a schoolgirl error. Now, that's maybe a little bit on the wide side for a centre plank. Maybe I can bring it in a bit. But what I'm doing is I'm keeping this line equidistant to the one that I've just drawn and again that's just to help us keep things from looking skewed yeah that's better so if anybody wants to uh, to like speak up and, and give me the technical terms for all this then please feel free okay so if I just sort of shut off all the rubbish that's round about this is starting to look a little bit like a rowboat which is nice and again when we we're thinking about our light sources over here that sun is going to catch right on the top of there and I think that's going to look quite nice as well and see maybe down here and this is all going to be in shadow because it's going to be protected by this this sort of fancy part so my, my pieces of pie here they're probably going to be a little bit darker and then this part underneath here is going to be really dark okay so i'm pretty satisfied with that so i think what we'll do is now we'll skip over the page and we will try and draw this you know put all these pieces together and try and draw a sort of a, a kind of like a half finished sketch well, that escalated quickly. <laughs> I uh, got up to go and do a few bits and pieces and before I knew where I was, it's, um, I don't even have a watch on, past seven at night. <laughs> so <laughs> that went well. Uh, yeah, I have had a lot of stuff to do today, but I was kind of hoping to get this finished this morning. So uh, just while I've been thinking about things and doing other things, I realised that it would have been better if I'd had these sort of thumbnails on this page here and then I could refer back to them without having to flip back and forth. Uh, so that was a bit of a school girl error on my part. So I am going to take this time to get started on this actual, actual sketch part. And I'm kind of thinking that just after doing these little sort of bits and bobs, I'm probably going to make this into a painting and I'm thinking an acrylic painting. So I'll just have a wee dig about my pencil case and I'm going to try and fish out my F pencil, which is this one here. And we're going to get this sort of rough sketch in place based on these thumbnails and we'll just take it from there. Right, and then I was going to have this shelf. I see this looks slightly off. So we decided we were going to have this plank that runs from this vanishing point 
So I want to go a bit either side. So there's my centre line there. So if I start it roughly there. And I just want to put the planes of these struts in again. So I was having a conversation with my best friend earlier on. And uh, she was in a, in a slightly comical situation, but also a slightly panicked situation. And uh, she had, basically she was locked out of her flat. Now my friend stays in the city. And <laughs> she stays in a in a secure like block of flats or apartments. So they have like a like a locked outside door, we call it a closed door. And then obviously there, there's an internal door in the courtyard that goes into the building and then she's got her front door. And uh, she realised that her partner had had a set of keys with him, but he was at work. And she got back from work and realised she didn't have any keys. Now, she'd managed to get into the courtyard and into the, the internal door. She just couldn't get into the door to her flat. And she said to me she was really frustrated because if she looked through her letterbox, you know, if she flipped her letterbox, she could see her keys hanging up. Now, I've had a conversation with her about this, about having the keys in view of that, of that letterbox because when people break into houses... If they can get to the keys, you know, if they're visible from the front door, they will do it. And the, the building itself is pretty secure, so she's not that much a risk. But I'm always telling her, I've been telling her for years, she's better to have a spare key, uh, you know, like stashed somewhere or with a neighbour or a friend or something. So that if she does get locked out, she can still get in. So uh, we were trying to come up with resourceful ways for her to reach her keys. And... That basically, <laughs> that basically culminated in her going to get her extendable leaf rake. And I don't know if you've ever seen them. They've got like big long prongs on them, but they've got a little handle. When you push the handle, they splay out and they, they get longer. And then obviously when you pull it, it all comes back in. So I said to her, I was like, get your retractable leaf rake and stick it through the letterbox and then open it up. Hook the keys off <laughs> off the key rack and then retract it again so that the keys don't fall on the floor and then manoeuvre them either to the point where you can get your other hand in the letterbox and unhook them or lift the whole thing out well she managed it and she does have really small hands my, my best friend's like tiny and I, I've got wee hands but she's like she's super tiny so she had no problems like ramming her hand in the letterbox to get her keys so after working a 12 hour shift she actually made it into her house with the help of her leaf rake and it's interesting because she's only taken up gardening recently since lockdown came in. That's when she started gardening. So prior to that, she had no garden tools at all and she would not have been able to get in her house. And she would have had to have phoned her boyfriend who would have had to have left work, driven 40 minutes to let her in to drive 40 minutes back to work, which wouldn't have gone down well, I don't think. So she was really lucky. But I said to her, I was like, go and try it. And if you, you know, phone me and let me know what happens. And the worst of it is... This is like one of the only times where I don't have a vehicle. My truck is away for its MOT, which is the yearly test. It's like a safety test you have to have done on your vehicles in the UK once they're over three years old um, so that you're roadworthy and you can get insurance and road tax. So it was like one of the only times where I didn't actually have a truck and Mr. Jem was away in his truck, so I couldn't even take his truck and go and like rescue her. Oh God. So I was just praying that she was going to phone and tell me she was in the flat. So anyway, I put the minute she phoned back and I picked up the phone, I knew she was in the flat because I could tell by the like the um the acoustics. And she's like, I'm in and my leaf rake worked and I'm going to make myself a cup of tea. <laughs> anyway, so that was uh, that was my chuckles. And, and she does stuff like that all the time. She is a typical blonde, and I know she won't mind me saying that because I'm always making fun of her for it. Right, I'm going to switch pencils now that I've got this sort of outline done. And I want to move to... Uh, I'll maybe just go 2B and a darker pencil. 8B is maybe a bit excessive. Oh, there we go. There's a 5B. A 2B and a 5B, that's fine. I've got jocks here for a cuddle. Come on, son. Like, well, don't sugar the table, geez, oh. <laughs> What's this job? <laughs> right, down you get it. He does this periodically, he just, he literally just wants a cuddle and then he goes back down. It's, uh, he's just, uh, he's just all kinds of special. Right, okay, so we want to think about our values now that we've got our base drawing down. I'm going to take my 5B pencil and I find it easier to start with the darkest areas. I just want to start there by 
just sort of scribbling in a little bit of shadow. And also this landmass as well is going to be pretty dark apart from the areas where that sunrise is going to start to hit it. So I'm just sort of just filling this in and obviously we are going to go back and work with this but I just want to get these, you know, different values. And when I say values, I mean the, the amount of dark and light, you know, the shading. So that's going to be our lightest area there and then... This is going to be a little bit darker and we might have some lines around here. Okay, so I think we'll start with the boat. I'm going to go back and use this 5B pencil. So this part here, this is going to be pretty dark because it's curved up the way like this. So we want to start working on that. So then we've got this edge here, these planks here, and again, the sun will be catching the top edge. So if I use my 2B pencil and just lightly run that up, again, we'll, we'll build up the value as we go. I was going to have some sort of bracket or something here, but I've changed my mind. I see this is, this is a fairly new pursuit for me, so I think I'll just uh, keep it simple. If I get brave in the painting, then by all means, I might, I might just go ahead and do that. I'm noticing there's something about this sketchbook that's annoying me and it's when you get near the uh, the crease of the book, the the way the paper folds over, it seems to change the texture and unless you hold it up like this, you get this weird, can you see it there? I don't know if you can see that line there and that's happened in every page so far and it's kind of annoying if I'm honest. I'm not really inspired or particularly in love with this sketchbook, I have to say. It's doing a job, like it's fine, there's nothing really wrong with it, but I'm just, I'm not excited about sketching in it and I've, every sketchbook I've had up till now, I've been excited and it's made me want to, you know, to draw in it and I just don't get that feeling with this at all, which is a bit of a shame really. I want to get this line in here again. This is like a sort of overlap, so I want there to be like a little bit of a shadow here. I'm having to try really hard to stop myself and keep this as a sketch and not work on this as a really detailed piece. And that's something I find super difficult. Uh, just because I like to work in pencil and I do like to work in graphite, it's a, it's a challenge for me to leave things in a sort of, not half finished state, that's the wrong phrase, but you know, leave it as a simple sketch and not get into this habit of, you know, putting in every single detail. I'm not very good at that, so I'm, I'm trying my, my little hardest here. Not only that, this video would end up about a decade long, and we've had this conversation. I was actually laughing at some of your comments when I did the um, the sort of tutorial video with the aubergine for the upgrade battle. So many of you said, were like, yeah, we don't mind longer videos. Unfortunately, those of you that do like longer videos, you are very much in the, the minority, and the general attention span of YouTube audiences is very very short so I'm afraid there will not be any massively long videos.
These are still going to be quite dark. They're not going to have much sun hitting them, even though they are further back, because they're facing this way rather than up the way. I can see that these aren't uniform. If you look at the shape of these, this one really kicks up at an angle. Um, and I'm not sure that that's going to look entirely right, but that's okay. It's not the end of the world. And I can just start building up a little more shading on the outside here as well. And again, just trying to remember that we want to follow the grain. Okay, I'm reasonably satisfied with that. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. And you guys don't really need to see me do it because I've already done this side. So I'm going to go and do that and I shall catch you back up in just a moment. Okay, so that's looking a bit more like it. With this plank in the middle, I have made it really dark under here. I do want a bit of differentiation between the curved parts of the boat and this plank in the middle. So that's why I've made it a, a good bit darker. But I've kind of darkened this down a little bit so that it matches up more. When it comes to this sort of scenery part here, I'm not going to do a huge amount. But I'm just putting in a little bit of 2B in the sky. And then I'm going to just mark out some of these wispy clouds a little bit. And it's more just like an indication that there's clouds there. It's not meant to be... You know, any, anything sort of complicated because we don't want complicated at this stage. And then I've got my little uh, rock over here. So I'm just going to kind of like pencil that in. Now again, it's going to be quite dark because the sun's shining on part of it. And obviously that means that this area will be in shadow. So if I just bring this shape down and then start to lighten up as I get over to this side. And then I've got my wee tree to think about as well. So I'm just going to kind of flesh that out. And the same thing again, this right hand side. I'm going to make this quite dark. And then on this left hand side, just as I bring this over, I'm just going to lighten that up. And really it's just an indication that there's some branches there and that the sun might be shining on them. If I zoom in a wee bitty there, just so that you can see, because I know that was quite sort of far away. But can you see what I've done there? And this is the dark side. So that's really what I'm going for there. And it's the same situation with the water. I'm not wanting it to be terribly detailed, but it is going to be a wee bitty darker around here. And I just want to put some like little lines around here so that we know that there, there's a bit of movement in the water. Like this. And then just down this side. Again, this is just the 2B and I'm just using it on its side. But I'm trying to keep these strokes as light as possible. And then just like an indication. That's probably a bit too um, violent. They should have been like wider and softer. I'm going to take that out. Because obviously the boat's going to be pushing through the water at, in, like, in some way. So if I just soften up that line there and join it in with, with what's going on here. So that gives us a little bit of an indication there and that's fine. And then over this side the water is going to start to get lighter because it's near the sun. There we go. So if I just zoom out a wee bit now, you can see that although this is still a very sort of rudimentary and I fully intend to keep it that way, you know, we're, we're looking a bit more like a sketch now. Although it's far away, it's this side is in the shadow, so we want that to be ref reflected, no pun intended, goodness me. Oh man, I'm on form tonight, am I not? <laughs> um, we want that to be reflected in the, in the actual bulk of the landmass. Now again, I'm going to keep this quite light up there because the sun will probably bounce off the top part of that. And then see, we've got this area in the water where this is going to be the, the shadow. All my dogs are coming in one at a time now to pester me and this is because it's nearly feeding time. Our dogs get fed at nine o'clock in the evening and that's just, it's like a hangover from when the dogs were, were working sheep dogs. It's a long story. Um, and they, they, I swear blind, they can tell the time. It's obviously their stomachs that are telling the time, but they're all coming up to me one at a time now to pester me to feed them. And 
they still have 34 minutes to go. So they're a bit, their timing's a bit off tonight. But they're not stupid. They are not stupid. So now it's we're sitting here eyeballing me. She's just sitting on the carpet looking at me. Like, well, are you going to feed me, Mum? Because because I really want fed. Because I love you. And I know that you'll feed me if I sit here and give you the eyes. Because I'm old and pathetic. And I need feeding before I fade away to a shadow. Because I'm an old lady. <laughs> okay, so just adding a wee bit in here. So I'm just kind of like doing anything specific. Right, the last thing I want to do before I leave this is just to come back to my boat and I want to add in when we were talking about this um, this texture here, uh, I want to be adding in some of that and I'm probably not going to do it over the whole thing because we would be here all freaking night. But again, it's back to this thing, if you give an indication of something, even in a, a rudimentary sketch, people's brains will pick those parts up and, and you know, make the rest up as it were. So that's something that... I quite like about drawing in general it's nice that that happens so I'm going to go back to my 5b and this is kind of difficult because you want it to be dark but also obviously the higher you go in the b scale the softer the pencil is so you do have to sharpen quite frequently and if I was to do this entire boat I would probably use up most of what's left of this poor little pencil I do have pencil extenders to hand she says looking and not seeing any they're over there somewhere um but we'll see how we go. So starting with, now I should really have a bit of tracing paper down here because I'm going to start to smudge this. See, because it's in my sketchbook, I'm not that bothered. If this was a finished piece, I would have something under my hand. So I just want to start with this, what we described as the ornamental piece. And I want to press enough so that you can see the texture over the top of the shading. But that texture also has to fit in with the shading. So in the darker areas, these little lines that we're putting in are, are going to be dark. And then in the lighter areas, we need to let our hand up a little bit so that it's all in, you know, it all sort of fits in. So I don't think there'll be much in the way of knots in this piece, to be fair. So the other thing I've just realised as well is I've got absolutely zero shading in this part here. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of that in while I'm here. Okay, that's a bit better. And then I've kind of lost this line as well. I'll just add that in. Okay, so instantly, instantly that looks better. And again, in the finished painting or drawing, I'll probably spend a bit more time on that and extend it out and make it look a little bit prettier. But it's serving the purpose just now. Okay, so we've got these parts here. And I just want to take in some lines. I say we don't have to go daft with the texture. Like it doesn't have to be on every single piece and really detailed and blah, 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 blah. Because that you, we would be here all day. I have said no, I've said that already, but it's so true. But if you just put in a few little lines here and there, maybe a crack or something, you know, people get the idea. Do you think you'll agree that's looking a bit more like weathered wood already and all I've done is a couple of strokes and we're good. On these side parts, this is where you can make things quite interesting because you can follow these lines all the way around and you know you can maybe have a little knot in the wood here and there. And again up near this top part where the light's hitting I do want that to be a little bit more delicate. You know I just said that the Jack Russell's sat down and she's eyeballing me she's fallen asleep. <laughs> she's actually lying down and she's fast asleep. That's hilarious. I see she, she is old bless her. She's nearly well she's 15 and a half so obviously that's very tiring waiting for food. <laughs> she's gone for a snooze. She's so funny. She snores really badly now and she's never been a dog that's been bad for snoring at all. Um, and again, it's obviously just our age, but it's really funny because you're, you know, you're sitting minding your own business, maybe sketching or reading a book or watching TV and all of a sudden you hear these little funny honky noises and you, you wonder what it is. You wonder if it's a cow outside that's maybe lost its calf or something and then you realise this is woo snoring. Okay, so this plank of wood here, we can be a bit more adventurous, I think. Now, bearing in mind that it is opening out just because of the... 
the perspective. We do have to keep that in mind as well. So I'm starting on this outer edge. I'm going to have a dirty great big knot right in the middle there. Note to self, Gem needs to practice curves in perspective. We can do that another time, that's not for today. But this is what I mean about doing stuff like this, like I've learned something already that I know I need to work on. And, and granted that's quite a complex shape in a perspective picture, but it's something that I need to work on and now I know I need to work on it and I would never have known that if I didn't want to draw this. See, all very logical, I promise. <laughs> Some of you are probably sitting there thinking, what is she rambling on about? It makes perfect sense in my mind, I promise. I am reasonably pleased with this, apart from these, the, see these sort of struts here, that definitely, definitely, definitely needs more work. Um, and that's something that I may have another little practice at before I, you know, translate this into some sort of painting. Um, and I can sit here all night and keep going back over things and back over things and back over things and maybe I will if I've got time but truthfully I don't think I will. Okay yeah I'm quite happy with that I'm going to call it quits there. Uh, so yeah I hope you have learned something from this or you've just enjoyed listening to me rattle on while I've done this. I've had pretty good fun with it. Uh, so yeah, it's, I've learned something from it and that's always a goal of mine when I do anything in my sketchbook so I just want to thank you for coming along for this little ride with me today. I've quite enjoyed myself even though it's taken me the whole freaking day to do it. I'd just like to remind you as well that the giveaway is still open for our 5,000 subscriber celebration so if you haven't entered that you still have time. The draw is open until the 27th of September so I'll leave a link to that video in the end card so that you can go and check it out after this is finished and please feel free there's some great prizes up for grabs this time and it's just my way of saying thank you for sitting and listening to me rabbit on about stuff like this for half an hour so if you have made it this far you're obviously enjoyed yourself so it's time to hit that thumbs up button and give me the internet equivalent of a cuddle because I love cuddles and I want you all to stay safe look after yourselves and we shall see you back in the cave really soon for another video. Have a great day everyone and bye for now.